Dear friends, we invite you to join us on a video journey through one of the most incredible countries in Europe, Croatia. The Republic of Croatia features stunning landscapes, a mild climate, clear, warm seas, and numerous historical monuments that rival the beauty and grandeur of landmarks in other old world countries. Croatia draws in with natural thermal springs, and along its coastline, the gentle waves of the Adriatic Sea caress cozy bays. The uniqueness of Croatia is apparent at first glance, pleasantly surprising even the most discerning foreign guest. Without exaggeration, it must be noted that this country, from our perspective of course, has no shortcomings and an evident abundance of advantages. Picturesque beaches, reminiscent of sunny Italy, spotless lakes, and impressive mountain slopes reminiscent of Switzerland, and pine forests resembling Norway. Moreover, it is a country of cities with ancient castles, whose walls breathe the secrets of ancient times. Croatian cities with small towns create a special architectural beauty and national parks enchant with unique natural coziness, providing unforgettable impressions and pleasant memories of this country. The Republic of Croatia, though small, is a charming country situated in the southern part of Central Europe and partially on the western Balkan Peninsula. It shares its borders with Slovenia to the north, Hungary to the northeast, Serbia to the extreme east, and Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Montenegro to the south. Additionally, it has a maritime boundary with Italy. The capital, Zagreb, is the largest city and serves as one of the primary administrative units, alongside 20 other counties which are territorial regions within the country. Croatia also encompasses an archipelago of almost 700 islands, with only 50 of them being inhabited. Covering a total area of 21,851 square kilometers, the Republic of Croatia has a population of approximately four and a half million people. The official language is Croatian, but in major cities and tourist hubs, English, Italian, and German are widely spoken. Among the older generation, there is considerable number who learned the Russian language as a mandatory subject in school during Croatia's time as part of Yugoslavia. Historically, the territory that is now Croatia has been a hub for diverse interactions among different peoples, languages, and religions. It has fully felt the political, economic, and cultural influence of powerful global centers. In the 11th century, an independent Croatia reached unparalleled prosperity establishing itself as one of the most influential kingdoms in the Balkan region. However, Byzantine, Ottoman, and Austro-Hungarian protectorates constantly altered the Balkan map from the 12th to the 17th centuries. Without delving into a detailed analysis of the highly complex historical and geopolitical processes, it's worth noting that only in 1929 did King Alexander proclaim and name the Union of Six Balkan States as the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, 
consisting of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Montenegro, Slovenia, Serbia, and of course, Croatia. 20 years later, after the Allied victory in World War II, Yugoslavia became a federative state, incorporating the mentioned republics and two autonomous regions. The Yugoslav model of the state and the balance between planned and liberal economies provided a certain level of success. The country experienced a period of economic growth and political stability until the early 1980s. However, the weakened federal government system was no longer able to withstand growing economic and political challenges. The process of the collapse of communist regimes in Eastern Europe in 1990 led to a series of democratic changes throughout Yugoslavia and Croatia in particular. The sovereign state took a course towards self-determination. Today, Croatia's main priority in foreign and domestic policy, integration into all Western Europe and Atlantic structures, has been successfully implemented. The territory of Croatia is mainly composed of the lowland basin of the Sava River, the hilly plains of Slavonia, Podravina, and Posavina. On the Adriatic coast of Croatia, the Dinaric Alps are located, with the country's highest peak being Mount Triglav, reaching a height of 1,913 meters. The second highest are Mount Dinara, and the Velibit mountain range. In contrast, the internal elevated regions of Croatia consist mainly of hills surrounding the lowland basins of small rivers, karst plateaus, and Fleisch valleys on the Istrian peninsula. The Adriatic Sea washes the Balkan and Apennine islands with an average depth of 827 feet. The northwestern part is relatively shallow, only 75 feet in the Gulf of Trieste, while in the south, the sea reaches a depth of 3,940 feet. The actual length of the Croatian part of the Adriatic Sea is quite extensive, covering 1,105 miles. The waters of the Adriatic near the Croatian coast are clean and transparent, since mountain rivers do not carry sediment and sand there. In August, the seawater warms up to a comfortable 77 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, with a salinity of a whopping 34%, twice as salty as the Black Sea. We hope this information will be useful to those planning a vacation on the Croatian coast. Furthermore, the water meets the strictest standards of the World Health Organization. The climate in northern Croatia is continental. In its central part, it is mountainous, and on the Adriatic coast, it is Mediterranean. The highest temperature in July through August in the continental regions of the country is 82 degrees while on the coast, it reaches 93 degrees. The lowest temperature in January through February ranges from 28.4 to 48.2 degrees. The air temperature in Croatia is influenced by the country's location in moderate geographical latitudes and the altitude of a particular region above sea level, its relationship with the land, and air currents also have a significant impact. Winters on the coast are relatively mild and snow-free. In remote regions of Croatia, however, snowfall occurs, giving a picturesque look to the already beautiful, cozy towns. Moving around mountainous areas becomes significantly more challenging during that time. Spring arrives early in Croatia, and by mid-May, it is in full bloom, delighting the eyes with lush greenery and the first flowers. 
the high mountains reliably shield the country's coast from cold northern winds in early spring and late autumn. Several factors impact the distribution of precipitation in Croatia. The most crucial among them is the movement of cyclones and anticyclones. In the summer, in the Pannonian lowland, and in the winter, on the Adriatic, air rises and cools due to heating, forming clouds that result in heavy showers with hail. When moist air masses from the south and west move towards Croatia, rising by the Dinaric Alps, large cumulus clouds form, bringing abundant precipitation to the Adriatic coast and high mountain regions. These atmospheric phenomena are also observed in areas of individual mountain ranges deep within the country, resulting in these regions of Croatia having increased rainfall. But don't let them scare you. After a brief heavy rain, the sun will surely appear in Croatia's azure sky, and all its natural colors will become much brighter. The largest city in the country, and its capital, Zagreb, is its economic, political, and cultural center. The city is located in the northwest of Croatia, along the Sava River, a tributary of the Danube, on the southern slopes of the Medvenica mountain. Zagreb is the only city in Croatia, including its suburbs, with a population exceeding 1 million people, accounting for more than 20% of the country's population. The legend of the origin of the city's name, Zagreb, tells that during an exhausting military campaign, the leader of the Croatian detachment at a rest stop thrust his sword into the ground, and from there, a powerful spring of icy water erupted. Zagrebati, exclaimed the leader joyfully, and the weary warriors, parched and exhausted, some with helmets and some with handfuls, began to zagrebati, eagerly drinking the delicious water. Cold and spring-fed, it instantly restored energy to the warriors and added strength to continue the campaign. According to the linguistic version insisted upon by experts in historical grammar, the origin of the name of the capital city should be sought in the old Croatian language, where the word Zagreb literally means embankment or fortification. The first mention of Zagreb dates back to the year 1094, when Hungarian King Ladislaus I established a Christian bishopric in the settlement on the hill of Kaptal. 150 years later, by the bull of Croatian-Hungarian King Bela IV, Zagreb was declared a free royal city. Since the center of state creation was formed here, Zagreb, quite understandably, becomes an important political, economic, and cultural center of the country, and one of the largest in Croatia. In 1669, the first educational institutions, a gymnasium and an academy were founded in the city. This date is considered the founding date of the University of Zagreb, one of the oldest in Europe. Today, this educational institution offers education in 29 faculties, and the university library, founded in the early 17th century, has the status of a national library. Its invaluable collections amount to more than 2 million volumes. By the way, Franjo Tudman, the first president of Croatia, who stood at the origins of the country's sovereignty, received education at the University of Zagreb. Much later, on June 25, 1991, the recent history of Croatia turned the first page. 
the Croatian parliament declared independence. And the question of choosing the city as the capital of independent Croatia practically did not arise. It was named Zagreb. The historical core of the city is divided into two parts. Gornji Grad, Upper Town, and Donji Grad, Lower Town. The so-called Upper Town is the historical center of Croatia, with ancient buildings that breathe the history of the distant past. This is where outstanding architectural landmarks of Croatia are located. The Gothic Church of St. Mark, the Baroque Church of St. Catherine, the Palace with the Chapel of St. Stephen, and the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. The lower town is mainly characterized by modern urbanism, with high-rise buildings, straight avenues, and orderly streets. It features numerous classical and avant-garde art centers, squares, and recreational areas, with locals aptly calling the center of the lower town the Green Horseshoe. This term reflects its formation by parks, cozy alleys, and fountains. During the evening and night hours, both the upper and lower towns exude a special mysterious charm, enhanced by the flickering streetlights that lend the capital a romantic ambience. Taking a stroll through Zagreb during this time proves incredibly calming and sets the mood exclusively for pleasant expectations. Interestingly, one can travel from the lower to the upper town not only through surface transportation, but also via a special funicular. If you find yourself in Zagreb, don't miss the chance to embark on such a journey. The city's panorama will undoubtedly leave a lasting impression. From a vantage point, it might be a bit challenging to scrutinize the architectural details of the Croatian National Theater, established in 1895 and acknowledged as one of Europe's historical and architectural gems. Situated in Marshal Tito Square, who presided over the former Yugoslavia for over 30 years, the theater still commands great respect as the architect of the most liberal model of socialism in Europe, during the 60s and 70s. Above all, Tito is remembered as a leader who preserved Yugoslavia's unity. In the so-called Upper Town, the historical center of the country, attention is drawn to the oldest cult buildings in Croatia, including the Church of St. Mark, Lodoshak Tower, and Stone Gate, housing a tiny chapel with an ancient icon of the Mother of God. This spot always attracts believers and tourists, offering a place for prayer to protect their children from harm. Theatrical Zagreb boasts 50 artistic societies, troops, studios, private theaters, and scenes. Notable venues include the unique and renowned concert hall named after Vatroslav Lisinski, where the Eurovision Song Contest unfolded in 1990, the Zagreb Puppet Theatre and the Operetta Theatre Comedy consistently draw crowds. One of Zagreb's standout museums is the Mimara Museum, featuring a collection of about 4,000 items spanning antiquity to examples of modern visual art. When in Zagreb, a visit to the gallery of old masters Strossmayer is a must. It is located in the eastern part of the upper town. The collections of Croatian collectors, patrons such as Oskar Herman and Vinko Percic promise to leave a lasting impression. Moreover, it's hard to overlook the Croatian Railway Museum in the capital, which boasts an array of amazing exhibits. Finally, there's the youngest museum in Zagreb and the world's only divorce museum, 
which in 2011 received the accolade of European Museum of the Year. The largest park in Zagreb is Maksimir, a favorite retreat for both locals and visitors to the capital of Croatia. Among the park structures, Maksimir is renowned for Luna Pavilion, the Swiss House, Bishop Juraj Halik's House, and the Gothic Chapel of St. George. The former Silk Factory building and the Bee Apiary also pique extraordinary interest in the park. Yes, a regular apiary, where a beekeeper is always ready to treat everyone to fragrant honey. What stands out the most is how the park's architectural ensembles harmonize with the surrounding landscapes. It's pleasantly surprising that there are no noisy attractions with intrusive music, making this green oasis ideal for leisurely romantic strolls and tranquil relaxation. At the same time, the park is home to the Zagreb Zoo and Botanical Garden. Notably, Maksimir is a public institution, and you can visit it whenever you please, with free admission. Additionally, Maksimir Park hosts the eponymous stadium, the largest sports arena in Croatia. It serves as the training ground for the most decorated Croatian club, Zagreb's Dynamo, and hosts home matches for the Croatian national football team. Over its more than a century-long history, the Maksimir Sports Arena has undergone several reconstructions. During the last renovation in 2011, the drainage system of the playing field was replaced. A new lawn with heating and an automatic irrigation system was laid. Numerous modern training grounds were set up near the main arena. Furthermore, the stadium's running tracks were upgraded and a comfortable space for people with disabilities was created. In line with modern requirements, the media center and VIP boxes were improved. Now, the stadium's bowl consists of four modern stands named North, East, West, and South, capable of simultaneously accommodating up to 40,000 spectators, with all seating areas designed exclusively for sitting. The stadium building also houses the Maximir and Blue Salon boxes, used for hosting ceremonial events and important business meetings. On the eastern side, the Maximir box offers a view of the football field, while the western side opens up a magnificent panorama of the city. It's worth noting that the Croatian national football team clinched impressive sporting accolades in the last two World Cups, securing silver in 2018 and grabbing a bronze medal four and a half years later. This is an outstanding achievement for a country with a population of around 4 million and a national league consisting of just 12 teams. What's the secret behind Croatian football's success? Despite sports analysts often predicting football woes and a shift in player generations for Croatia, Luka Modric, at 38, continues to find robust internal motivation for a productive game with a national team. He plays football not for titles and honors, but for his people, his country, understanding how crucial it is for his small homeland. That's the entire secret. In addition to sporting events and football matches, the Zagreb Maksimir Stadium hosts major theatrical concert spectacles, featuring not only domestic artists. Foreign performers also visit here as part of their global tours, delighting the grateful Croatian audience. David Bowie once graced the stadium with his performance, and U2 and Bon Jovi enjoyed tremendous success. Zagreb can confidently be labeled a cultural capital. It plays host to several international festivals, such as Anima Fest, the World Festival of Animated Films, the International Folklore Festival, the Eurocaz Theatre Festival, and the Contemporary Dance Festival. 
The Zagreb Film Festival has become a well-established tradition, with Zagreb Docs, a prestigious documentary film festival, being particularly captivating within its framework. Croatians take great pride in the fact that since 1996, Zagreb has been the venue for the International Street Performers Festival. In the summer, both amateur and professional concerts bring music to every corner of the capital, turning Croatia into a continuous singing stage for several weeks. Thousands of local and international musicians sing day and night, showcasing the beauty and uniqueness of Croatian folk music. It incorporates elements from the musical cultures of various nations, including Serbs, Roma, Italians, and Bulgarians. However, Croatian music has its original melody inherited from Slavic folklore dating back to the 7th century. One of Croatia's most renowned national musical instruments is the tamborica, a variety of the Italian mandolin. With its melancholic accompaniment, it sets the tune for folk lyrical songs about love or challenging destinies. If you hear such a song, take a moment to share the gentle sadness with the street performer. They sing, including for you. The Republic of Croatia is considered one of the most developed republics of the former Yugoslavia. The income per capita in socialist-era Croatia was consistently at least a third higher than the average indicators of the federal state at that time. In addition to the traditionally robust tourism, transportation, trade, and service sectors, Modern Croatia boasts a well-developed industry, particularly in food, machinery, light, chemical, pharmaceutical, and profitable agriculture. Croatia has confidently maintained a monopoly in Mara culture for over a decade. The industrial-scale artificial cultivation of sea fish and mollusks oriented towards global export. Today, Croatia's industrial sector constitutes approximately 20% of the gross national product, rapidly approaching European Union levels. Zagreb serves as an international trade and business hub at a bustling crossroads between Central and Eastern Europe. The capital of Croatia hosts the main offices of virtually all national banks, communal enterprises, public transportation, and key economic entities in the country. Among them are the headquarters of the largest domestic industrial organizations and the representations of numerous foreign companies. Croatia is taking leaps and bounds towards developing its tourism industry. And we're not just throwing around fancy words here. Absolutely not. Just a few years ago, the hotels in this country were a sorry legacy of post-communist times. But today, after complete renovations, they stand as beautiful establishments with comfort levels meeting global standards. Touristic Croatia now offers quality service and friendly professional staff with cozy, neat interiors in spacious, modern rooms. Vacationing in this country can satisfy even the most discerning traveler. Sandy beaches and the warm Adriatic Sea. Yacht cruises along picturesque rocky coasts with whimsical caves and untouched coves. Croatia will appear to a special cast of travelers. Diving enthusiasts. The crystal clear waters of this sea reveal a unique world of Adriatic depths. Its clarity allows you to admire the flora and fauna during a boat ride or underwater taxi. 
A tourist journey to Croatia promises a unique experience with its pristine nature, fresh air, and diverse and picturesque landscapes under a warm climate. This destination offers not just a vacation, but a healthful retreat for the body and a delightful escape for the soul. It seems as if Croatia was tailor-made for leisure, providing relaxation at its finest. Whether it's the sea, islands, mountains, rivers, waterfalls, crystal clear lakes, historical landmarks, or architecture, Croatia has it all. It's no wonder Game of Thrones chose Croatia as its filming location with a stunning King's Landing representing the docks and streets of the beautiful Dubrovnik resort town. A vacation in this country transforms into a journey through a fairy tale or an enchanting childhood dream. Croatia means staying in comfortable hotels or fashionable apartments where guests are always welcomed with the best conditions. And vibrant taverns and restaurants are ready to serve delectable meals at reasonable prices. Notably, yachting plays a significant role in Croatia's tourism industry. The country's state policy focuses on increasing investments in this form of active tourism. Croatia boasts well-organized infrastructure for yacht charters, featuring numerous modern marinas purpose-built for this activity. Nationally, there's training available for sailors, including a state exam and the subsequent issuance of international qualification certificates. In Croatia, Travelers can explore an abundance of forests, including eight national parks and 11 nature parks with waterfalls and lakes. Here, you won't find litter on the beach or in the sea. Croatia's water supply system ensures the provision of pure and high-quality drinking water. Locals drink it straight from the tap. Those who prioritize these aspects often embark on a journey to Croatia. And if you are one of them, you'll likely fall in love with this country for a lifetime. Croatia also offers gastronomic tours, showcasing a remarkable and highly distinctive local cuisine. Locals infuse regular vodka with fruits, honey, pine, and herbs, ideally paired with goat or sheep cheese, dried or smoked meats. Not to mention the oysters from Mali Stan, considered the world's most delicious and high quality earning them the Grand Prix and gold medal at the World Exhibition in London. Some gourmands specifically travel to Croatia just to savor them. And the seafood dishes, shrimp, mussels, and lobsters? Simply delectable. All complemented by local wines. Vacationing in Croatia benefits those with respiratory issues thanks to the unique blend of pine and deciduous forests, the opportunity to breathe in the sea air fully, and the laid-back lifestyle that quickly alleviates the big city fatigue syndrome. The country boasts stunning natural landscapes, and it's not just Croatians who claim that the eastern Adriatic coast is the most beautiful in the Mediterranean. They've heard this from awestruck guests. 
Words can't capture the intoxicating scent of lavender on the island of Havar, and Dalmatian pines mingling with the sea breeze. The colors of the Biokovo mountain range at sunrise and sunset, and the azure shades of the sea reflecting in the surrounding emerald beauty. Doctors confidently assert that spending two weeks on the Croatian coasts adds vitality for two years ahead. If you're planning such a revitalizing vacation with the whole family, you won't find a better destination than Croatia. Moreover, this country is incredibly interesting from an excursion standpoint, thanks to its rich cultural and historical heritage. No matter where you choose to vacation in Croatia, you'll feel the medieval atmosphere that has absorbed the thousand-year history of this remarkable country. It's impossible to see all the beauty in one visit, of course. However, if you're vacationing in the southern part of the country, you simply must visit the monument city of Dubrovnik. Built in the Renaissance style, it once inspired even the great Englishman William Shakespeare. The palace of Roman Emperor Diocletian in Split will impress with its monumentality and grandeur, century-old white stone cobblestones, and the globally renowned palm-lined promenade along the waterfronts. Those seeking paradise on Earth must come to Dubrovnik, said playwright Bernard Shaw once, and you can trust him. If you choose the Istrian Peninsula for your vacation, you'll encounter the Colosseum and in Pula, the unique Rovini, preserving the eternal spirit of Rome. And of course, Porec, famous for the rare beauty of the Byzantine mosaic in the Basilica of St. Euphrasius. What more to say? In every corner of Croatia, you'll find uniqueness seen only by you. And each time, it will unfold anew. When it comes to this country as a tourist destination, it's important to highlight that its coastline is washed by the cleanest sea in Europe, visible up to 50 meters deep. You just have to see it for yourself. If you've ever dreamed of seclusion on an island, Croatia is the ideal place to bring that dream to life. The Adriatic coast, with its emerald blue waters, cozy sandy beaches, and countless untouched islands, is the perfect destination for those special travelers seeking a break from the noisy crowd. This country opens up unlimited possibilities for hiking, cycling tours, river rafting, breathtaking scuba diving, windsurfing, and exhilarating parachute jumps. Croatia is very convenient for travel, picturesque and not very large, yet perfectly suited to be explored in a short span of time. By the way, if you didn't know, this country is the homeland of a very, very famous traveler. Streets, squares, and museums in Croatia are named after him. That's Marco Polo. With each passing year, tours to Croatia are gaining increasing popularity among enthusiasts of safe and comfortable vacations. And those who have ventured to Croatia for the first time will surely harbor hopes of returning to this amazing country. Because Croatia is a delight from the very first moment. Croats are incredibly hospitable and friendly people. They gladly respond to requests for help and are very kind to all foreigners without exception. In Croatia, wherever you go, 
They will eagerly inquire about where you're from and with no less interest, listen to how life is organized in your homeland. Croats have a wonderful sense of humor. They know how to genuinely express their feelings and love to savor the simple joys of life. A cup of coffee enjoyed at the beginning of a sunny day in one of the city cafes, or an evening in a regular street bar with friends. These are the things that make them happy. Moreover, all Croats share a special Adriatic state of mind. They are true patriots, passionately love their homeland, and are willing to do absolutely everything beneficial for it. Croats do everything very quietly. Why is that? Because every Croat, from small to large, has internalized a simple truth. Life tested, happiness and means, love silence. Furthermore, if you happen to have a different opinion on this matter, it will easily convince you of the practicality of their rule. Ordinary Croats strive to worry exclusively about their lives, highly value personal space and family comfort, and manage it quite well. For them, everything Croatian is the most perfect and best. Nature, dishes, culture, history, and language. Croatians take great pride when a foreigner speaks Croatian. If you're invited to a family celebration or holiday, consider it a display of special affection and sympathy. Croatians are very beautiful, especially the women. By the way, they are highly emancipated compared to women in other Yugoslav republics. They often take on leadership roles in the family and are the ones making responsible decisions. Croatian women strive to build successful careers, matching men professionally. And it must be said, men highly appreciate this all while not forgetting about female beauty. The good manners of the people in this country are evident in the fact that Croatia is considered one of the safest countries in Europe in terms of crime rates. It's not customary to lock doors with five locks and on the streets, you often encounter parked cars with open windows. These Croatian traditions may surprise you initially but eventually, you get used to them to the point that when you return home, you might find yourself in a bind, leaving your belongings unattended or forgetting to lock the door. Croatians are characterized by a special love for order, cleanliness, precision in everything, and punctuality. They have an ideal aesthetic taste and a sense of style. By the way, it's interesting to note that Croatia became the legislator of the world fashion for ties. Here, this accessory is called kravat. The history, my friends, is a strange thing. The first mentions of ties can be traced back to the Thirty Years' War, from 1618 to 1648 when officers and soldiers of the Croatian army wore colorful silk scarves around their necks. According to legend, the French warriors, impressed by the neck scarves of Croatian riders, pointed at them and asked, what is this? And the Croatian warriors thought they were being asked, who are you? And proudly replied, Croatians, or Havrati. To the French, it sounded like Kravati. After the victory over the Turkish Janissaries, Croatian warriors were invited to the court of the French King Louis XIV as a reward for their courage and victory on the battlefield. It was then that the unusual neck accessory caught the Sun King's eye, known for his passion for exquisite things and clothing. 
he really liked the new wardrobe item, and unable to resist, he also tied it around his neck, becoming the first legislator of Thai fashion, not only in France, but throughout Europe. Today in modern Croatia, the fact of its invention by compatriots is considered absolutely proven. The tie, as a source of pride, is actively supported by national historiography, extensively used as a brand in promotional activities, advertising, and the tourism industry. Croatia is a country at the crossroads of various cultures. This has inevitably left its mark on its national cuisine, where two culinary traditions seamlessly intertwine, Mediterranean and Central European. Croatians can unquestionably be labeled as gourmands, given the significant emphasis on exclusively fresh and deliciously prepared food. Meat enthusiasts will find the central region of Croatia particularly appealing, as the local cuisine bears influences from Hungarian, Austrian, Turkish, and Arab culinary traditions. Consequently, most dishes feature beef, lamb, and poultry. Those with a penchant for fish and seafood, on the other hand, will likely favor the cuisine of the Croatian coast strongly influenced by Italy. Despite the substantial overlay of other countries' cuisine, authentic Croatian dishes stand out with a unique taste and distinctive characteristics. If you find yourself hungry on a Croatian street, no worries. A traditional tavern, known as a konova, a small family restaurant exuding genuine hospitality, awaits you at almost every turn. What does this entail? Simple rules of humanity and trust, warm smiles, treating visitors like the dearest guests long awaited in a lifetime. The hosts highly value and uphold their reputation, making a visit to such a konova an invaluable experience for travelers. Expect numerous compliments, discussions about various topics, and inquiries about your well-being, which is sure to improve as the owner sincerely wishes, offering a delightful lunch or dinner. So what delicacies should you try in Croatia? Let's acquaint ourselves with the culinary masterpieces of this country, crafted with love over centuries and considered national treasures. One such delight is prosciut, an exquisite Croatian dish. Its popularity is such that many take it home as a souvenir from Croatia, ensuring the memory of this beautiful country stays with them. Prosciut is pork ham dried in the sun and sea breeze or smoked over wood charcoal. If you visited Croatia and didn't savor prosciut, it implies one thing. You haven't truly experienced Croatia. And the rich, vibrant taste, unlike anything else, Look no further than kulin, a national delicacy originating from Slavonia. They refer to it as kulin, a sausage crafted from minced pork blended with various spices that not only impart spiciness, but also an aesthetically pleasing hue to the dish. The acclaim for Kulin is evident from the sausage festivals known as Kulin Yada, held annually in various cities throughout Croatia. 
If your visit aligns with one of these festivals, the culinary experience will rival even the renowned Pog cheese, a type of hard cheese from the island of Pog, produced from sheep's milk with the addition of olive oil and local aromatic herbs. The secret recipe for Pog cheese is zealously guarded by ancestral cheesemakers who won't disclose the age-old formula for any amount of money. As for a Dalmatian pasticada, a robust meat dish, there's only one thing to say. It's incredibly delicious. Crafted from beef, marinated in a special sauce with aromatic spices. And Croatian burek is a meat pie from traditional peasant cuisine. The remarkably tasty filling of meat, spices, cheese, potatoes, and onions is encased in thin layered dough. By the time you finish it, you'll be too full. So they'll kindly pack it for you in the canoba, wish you bon appetit, and invite you to visit again. All that's left is for you to keep that promise. It's worth noting separately that the variety of fish, mollusks, oysters, and lobsters in Croatia is extremely vast. Nothing surprising. It's a maritime country. When you step into a seafood restaurant, be sure to take the opportunity to savor its offerings. The most famous Croatian fish dish is brodet or brudet, stewed in red wine and seasoned with piquant spices. In addition, you'll be offered black risotto with seafood and cuttlefish ink, octopus salad, and fish soup. Definitely try the fresh oysters, harvested just for you on the oyster farm. And a bottle of white wine will complement the deliciously prepared fish delicacies perfectly. Croatian wines are renowned well beyond the country's borders. Few visitors, whether on business or vacation in Croatia, leave without savoring the local wine. Croatians themselves often say that a day without wine is like a day without sunshine. For anyone visiting Croatia, the array of souvenir products is a sight to behold. The irresistible desire to purchase something interesting and undeniably original as a memento of this hospitable country is entirely natural. The most common local souvenir is wine, and Croatia boasts a diverse selection of wine varieties. Travarica, Slivovica, and Kruštkovica are light and pleasant choices, with these wines infused with herbs and corresponding fruits from local orchards. Among tourists, the cherry liqueur, Maraschino, also enjoys considerable popularity. For a more exquisite and sophisticated gift, consider Morčić's jewelry, a collection of elegant handmade brooches, earrings, rings, pins, and pendants adorned with coral. The best souvenirs among traditional folk crafts undoubtedly include the exceptionally beautiful Dalmatian lace and embroidery, items crafted from wool and leather, carpets, ceramics, national costumes, and tapestries. Situated adjacent to Italy, Croatia hosts quality clothing and footwear in its large shopping centers and small stores. The selection is quite respectable, though not as lavish as in Milan. Keep an eye out for leather clothing, wallets, and bags, as well as footwear from local and international brands. Regardless of your purchase, you'll never regret it, as each item carries a piece of Croatia's unique charm, providing a lasting memory.
Well, friends, our journey with Croatia is coming to a close. We warmly thank everyone involved for their support and assistance in organizing a pleasant and unforgettable encounter with this amazing country, the Adriatic Pearl of Europe. Speaking briefly but honestly and convincingly about the unforgettable impressions from the journey, stumbling upon this Adriatic symphony of sun, sea, and wind is a one-time occurrence. The beauty, uniqueness, and hospitality of this remarkable country will irresistibly beckon you back each time. <laughs>